In this tutorial, I am going to show you how you can install and run RaxML in a Linux environment. RaxML is a tool that is used to perform maximum likelihood phylogenetic analysis. You will therefore download the source code, compile it, and then set a path to the binary files that will be generated after compilation. In order to follow this tutorial, you need to make sure you have Linux installed, and then you also need to have GCC installed in the Linux that you have. Let's begin the show. We will first visit the GitHub page and download the source code. This is the GitHub page for RaxML. I will leave a link in the description box so that you can use that to also visit this page. So on the page, there are instructions also for installing as well. Because I want to use the Ptrace version, I'll use this command here. So I will advise that you also follow this command here. And later on, if you want to make any modifications, you can do that. So let's download the source code. We will go to releases. Click on it, and then you'll be sent to another page. We are going to use version 8.2.12. Okay, this is the version we are going to use. Notice there's a tabor, and then there's a zip file. You will use the zip file. You can click on it to download, or you can use the command line. Because I want to use the command line, I will need to get the download link. And to do that, I will right click the file and then click on copy link location. So now I have the download link. I will now move to the terminal and perform the download. In the terminal, I will move to my home directory by issuing the command cd. From the home directory, I will download the source code. I will use widget. So this is how it's done. Widget, and then you supply it with a download link. There are other tools besides widget that you can use, but I will prefer that you use widget so that we are all on the same page. Now let's execute this command. Download is complete, but we can confirm by issuing the ls command. So we have the file there. Let me clear the screen. We will now extract the contents, meaning that we are going to unzip the file. We are going to unzip because the file is in the zip format. Notice the extension here as well. Just how we do it. We see unzip and then we indicate the file name. If I've been unzipped, let's clear the screen. Do an ls and we have this directory created. Okay, this was extracted from this zip file. Let's do an ls into this directory. ls. So we have all these files there. Okay, we are going to compile with the pthread version. Now there is another document that will help you to select the right file for compiling. So let's quickly look at that. So this document here will guide you. So depending on how old your system is, you need to 
select the appropriate file, whether you are using standard SSE3 or AVX version. Okay, so this document here will help you to do that. In my case, I'm using a system which was bought three to four years ago. Therefore, I'll go for the SSE3 version. Okay, but if you also have a system that is bought or that is within this age bracket here, then you can also use the AVX version. So, depend on your system, then you select the appropriate file tab from which you do the compilation. Okay, so I'll use this one here as an example. So let's go back to the terminal and do the compilation. So based on the information that we've discussed, I'll go for this particular file here and compile. Because I also have GCC installed. So let's look at how you compile it. Let's clear the screen first. You will CD to this directory, the one that we unzipped. So we say CD standard. Let's do an LS again. Our target is this one. Okay, let's clear the screen again. So to do the compilation, we type make dash f. Then we indicate the make file. Then we are using p threads version. And we are using the ss3. So we see makefile.sse3.p threads.gcc. Once we have this, we hit the enter to execute it. Okay, so compilation is complete. Let's clear the screen first. Let's issue an ls command. So when we issue the ls command, notice that we have this created. This is the file that we are interested in. That's the binary file that has been generated. We want to properly organize our installation. Therefore, we will move this file to a different directory. So let's cd back to our previous directory. So let's, let me clear the screen first. Let's cd dot dot slash to move back to our previous one. Okay. So let's do an ls again. Now we are back to our previous directory. We want to create a directory called apps and then move that binary file into it. So let's do that. So let's say make the apps. Let's review the file again from this one. We are moving this and at the same time, you also want to rename it to something simple. Okay, so we are going to rename it as RaxML. But you can also choose any appropriate name that you want. It's fine. Therefore, we are going to say move and we specify the directory. And then we indicate this one because this is the file that was created. And then we move it to the new directory, which is apps. 
and then in the process of moving we give it a new name which is Rux ML HPC. Let's name it this way. So now if you ls the apps we are going to find Rux ML HPC there. Now we can test this installation. So let's say apps slash Rux ML HPC. Okay. Now we are only testing. We've not specified or we've not added any input file. So therefore this error message here is expected. But the display of the text indicates that our file is okay. With the current setup, whenever we want to run Rux ML, we need to always give the four parts. This becomes problematic if we are in a different directory. We always have to specify that. So to make it simpler, we want to make it in such a way that when we call Rux ML HPC, it will be able to run. But with the current setup, when we type Rux ML HPC, we have this issue occurring. To avoid this issue from occurring, we need to set the path. That means we are going to modify the .bash RC file. So first of all, let's get a path of the directory where RuxML binary file is. We will therefore cd to apps directory. Of course, when we do ls, Rux ML HPC is there. We want a part of this directory, so we say PWD. So this is the path we want. Please note that yours might be different, so we take note of whatever part is displayed for you. Now let's cd back. We are seeding to our home directory, so we can say cd. Now, before we modify the .bash RC file, let's make a backup of it. We are making a backup so that in case anything happens to the original file, we can replace that with a backed up file. So let's do that. We say cp .bash RC, and then we give the new name that we want for the copied file. So we say bash rc dot spark. That is done. Let's clear the screen. Let's even do a quick exploration of a dot bash rc file. So let's say head dot bash rc. Okay, so the dot bash rc file contains commands and configurations that you want executed whenever you open the terminal. So we are going to add to it. The .bash RC file is a text file, so you can use any text editor to make your editing. I prefer to use nano, so this is how I'll do it. I'll say nano .bash RC. Then we scroll down to the very bottom where there is no text and then add the statement. We say export path is equals to dollar path. We add our colon and then we add the path that was displayed to us when we were in the apps directory. Mine was slash home slash student2 slash apps. This is it. So now we save changes and exit. But now no, it's control X and then you confirm changes and you exit. This settings we've made will only be reflected when we open a new terminal. So let's open the new terminal. 
So in the new terminal, we can just issue Rax ML HPC. And there we have it. The configurations were successful. So we can now issue this name in any directory that you find yourself and Rax ML will run. Now it's time to do some cleanup. Let's do an ls. Notice we had a zip file downloaded. We had this directory also created and we also had this file copied. We want to save space so we want to delete the ones we don't need. This, this and then this. So let's begin. We begin with a zip file. So we say rm. When we get to this one, this is a directory with contents in it. So we have to do a recursive remover. Please note that the rm command will completely erase whatever file or directory we specify. So let's remove the directory. We say rm that's fr. Then we add the name. We will now remove the backup file. You can copy it anywhere that you want as well, but for this tutorial, I will remove it. I'm removing it because we've not had any issue after modifying the original file. So we remove it. You see rm rc dot back. Now everything is clean. Let's do an ls. We have everything done. So this is how we install and configure and then run RaxML in a Linux environment. In future videos, I will show you how you can use RaxML to perform your phylogenetic analysis. So stay tuned for that. And with that, I will say thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next session. Goodbye.